Howdy folks, this is Brian, Site Manager at HobbyLink.com, here with another episode of Boss Builds. Uh, we've been doing the Fujimi Type 10, 170 second scale Type 10 main battle tank. I got some paint on it last time and I'm going to do some detailing painting on it, which I've already done actually, and I'll be showing you that today. Alright, so, uh, detail painting. If you uh, tuned in last episode, you saw that uh, I painted the camo colors on there, uh, the green and the brown, the dark green and the brown, and uh, had some little problems there, but got it all worked out. Uh, I say I pulled a victory out of the jaws of defeat, but really it was just, I just repainted it. Um, if you watched the last episode, you saw that I had a little problem with the masking and had to go back and repaint the whole thing. So, you know, it wasn't really that uh, great of a, a save. It was just you know, doing it again. Uh, and it turned out pretty good. So as you see here now, I've got the tank painted in the green, the dark green and the brown camo colors. And I spent the last two nights at home uh, detail painting. Um, as you've seen before, I used the airbrush to paint the main camo colors uh, and also the black on there originally, which was totally primed in black. And I used brushes to do the detail painting because uh, it's really hard to get tiny little details like some of the stuff on here painted uh, with an airbrush. So the brushes I used, which I will pick up and show here, uh, is... Now this is weird because I bought these a million years ago and all the names and sizes and everything are gone. I can barely see it on here. Uh, this is about an eighth of an inch, I guess, chisel type brush I use for, for painting some larger area details on here, like the, the canvas cover on the, the main gun barrel, uh, the black on the machine gun, uh, even the antennas. I painted uh, the metallic gray on the antennas there. Uh, and for more detail, more tiny details I used, this is the same brand, apparently. Uh, again, the brand is worn off, and I can't see what size this is. This says maybe four slash zero. Um, I don't know, I picked it because I like the size. Um, some of you out there might know more about the size numbers and all that. Uh, but this, was a, this is a very fine brush, and I could really get in and paint some of the details like the, um, the episcopes around the commander's cupola here. I went in there and painted black in there. Uh, the driver's vision blocks here. Uh, the, the gunner's uh, um, optical system here, uh, little dots in there. Uh, so with this little brush, I was able to get in and paint a lot of the details. Uh, the cable on the back, tow cable on the back, just you know, used the smallest brush I could to keep from sloshing it around. Uh, another way to do that is, of course, paint it before you glue it on, and then you don't have to worry about uh, trying to not get paint everywhere else. Um, so yeah, use that brush for that. Now, as I think I mentioned before, I was going to use something called micro brushes, which I have two here, micro, because they are indeed very small, uh, and they're not like conventional brushes in as much as they're not just bristles coming out the end. Uh, they're like little balls of fluff. I don't know what they're made out of, but they're, you know, they're bristles similar to brushes, but much finer. And as you can see here, uh, come out all over the place, like little balls, slightly elongated balls. Um, and it comes in different sizes. I have two here. I think there's four different sizes. I've got one of the smaller and the medium sizes here. And these are great for getting into places and putting paint at a 90 degree angle when you can't, like you couldn't really reach in and do it with a brush. So what I used with these, and in particular this, the tiniest one is, uh, I went in here and sloshed in uh, the colors for the road wheels on the metal part. The road wheels are rubber, the black rubber around and the, the camo colors inside. So as you can see that the, the road wheels are different colors as per where the camo comes in here. And as I think I mentioned before, I wasn't, wasn't too concerned about getting the edges completely right in there because this is all going to be pretty uh, weathered up later on down to the bottom uh, with washes and uh, I'll use some dark earth, flat earth colors to make it nice and dusty. So I wasn't too concerned about getting a nice sharp edge in between the, the road wheel metal part, painted part, and the black rubber road wheel, although it's kind of in there. Uh, so this was good for that. Um, I actually went in and, and masked off the rubber uh, dust shield again, so, so I wouldn't slop too much paint on there. Uh, but, but this is really good. This is also flexible. The whole tip here is very flexible, so you can get in there and basically just twist it around and uh, it slops it up real nice. So micro brushes, again, they come in different sizes. Now unfortunately, we do have these in the HLJ catalog, but they've been discontinued for several years. Um, you never know when a, a reissue might come out, uh, but we'll provide the links uh, in the uh, the, uh, dot .tv site, so you can check them out anyway, even though you can't order them now. Uh, but they might still be available elsewhere, although we prefer you buy them from us. If we had them, 
uh, well, let's do what we can do. So micro brushes, very cool. Uh, and then regular brushes, also very cool. Oh, I can tell you that these are sable. They do say these are sable brushes. Uh, they're not nylons or synthetics, um, so I really can't compare these to those. Oh, this is also, this larger one is a number one, if that means anything to you brush aficionados out there. Uh, so the larger one, which again appears to be about a one-eighth chisel type, uh, number one, and this other pointy one, which is four slash zero. Anyway, hopefully that, that information can help you. And we do carry uh, quite a wide variety of regular brushes, uh, so we'll provide a link for that later as well. Um, now, going, going back to the model, uh, we can talk about some of the colors I used. Uh, as I mentioned before, I think I just painted the machine gun, just flat black, testers, not testers, where did that come from? Not testers, Tamiya, the good old Tamiya flat black. This is the same color I used to prime the whole tank with, and the same color that you can see on the, uh, the rubber skirts right there. So I just painted that with the flat black, and then I went over that and dry brushed, which we'll probably need to describe what that means. I dry brushed with one of my ancient bottles of Tamiya's XF56 uh, metallic gray. It's kind of a metallic silvery grayish color as the name would indicate. And I've actually darkened this up a little bit with some flat black because it was it's a pretty bright uh, gray, metallic gray when you're done with it. Uh, so what I did with this is took a brush, which I don't have here, I took an older brush and uh, for those of you who don't know what the dry brushing technique is, you take a brush, usually a shorter old worn out brush and you get some paint on it and you wipe off most of that paint uh, and then you just sort of brush it over what you want to dry brush. Uh, again, you don't want the paint to be really wet. Uh, you don't want a lot of paint on there or it'll just slap it on there with a lot of brush strokes that don't look, that doesn't look natural. Um, so doing it here, uh, just to kind of get a metallic gunmetal effect, uh, again, the flat black first and then the uh, dark, what is it? No, the metallic gray, the memory goes. The metallic gray, dry brushed on there, it gives it a nice metallic look. Now I also use that on the tracks, even though there's gonna be more weathering on the tracks to come with uh, some earth tones and colors like that. Uh, I went ahead and I don't know if you can see it much here, uh, just did some dry brushing on the tracks themselves. You can see it along the edges here uh, with the, the metallic gray. And I also just use the straight metallic gray color on the antennas here uh, and also on the tow cable in the back, checking the references. Uh, if you remember from episode one, I have that good book about the Type 10. Uh, they have pictures from every angle and uh, the antennas and the tow cable are essentially the same color, just sort of a metallic grayish silvery color. So that's what I used and it worked out pretty good. Uh, other colors I used on here was for the, again, the, the canvas recoil cover thing here that goes on there. Uh, I just used some Tamiya XF51 khaki drab. Uh, this is supposed to be a very flat color, um, but it was a very uh, old bottle of paint. This one, I always mark my paints. This is from 2004, so it's a pretty old bottle of paint. I had to refresh it with a, a good shot of enamel thinner. Uh, and it didn't really get flat. And I don't know if that's because it's old or whatever. The color's fine itself, uh, but it still maintains sort of a semi-gloss sheen, uh, as you can see on there. Um, I also painted some of the on-vehicle materials, these shovels, picks, sledgehammer, and uh, other parts back here, kind of with this color, uh, which is something you don't actually even really need to do because on most modern tanks and armored vehicles, uh, the tools are essentially the same color as the tank itself. I don't know if they put them on there and then just shellac the whole thing with paint in one go, or they you know, paint them separately, but if you see modern military vehicles these days, tools are all the same, but that uh, kind of looks a little drab uh, on a small model like this. So just to make it pop out a little bit more, I painted those some different colors, uh, the, the khaki drab there, as it turned out. Uh, and again, it's a little shiny, but that'll all come out later when I do the final, um, flat coat. I'll use some of the GSI Krios Gunze Sangio uh, clear flat water-based uh, overcoat and it'll knock everything down really super dead flat. Um, and then I'll go back and use the little brushes and uh, maybe even the micro brushes to pick out again the optics which are supposed to be glass and need to be a little shiny so I'll probably go back through and uh, put little dabs of uh, either a clear coat or future. Future floor polish in the States, I think the name's actually changed over the years, uh, but it's an acrylic floor wax that you put on your floor to wax them, makes them nice and shiny. Uh, it has been used in the modeling community for decades uh, to have uh, clear uh, glossy coats um, for putting decals on top of, which we'll talk about later, or for just making these shiny. So I'll probably use some of that. 
Her other detailed painting on here was a little bit of flat black around the base of the antennas, which I did with the other smaller brush. Um, I put some dots of orange. Now this was gloss orange, just plain old orange, as they call it, X6. Uh, it's a glossy Tamiya color. Uh, and I applied that to the driving lights up front uh, just with a toothpick. Kind of took a, I don't have a toothpick here to show you, but we all know toothpicks. A little sharp at the end, I kind of scrunched the end up a little bit to make it flat, uh, opened the paint, and just dipped the toothpick into the lid just to get a little blob of paint on the end there. And then just holding the tank like this, just very carefully went point, point, like that. And uh, if you get a nice good blob of paint on there, not too big, of course, uh, when you apply it there, it'll make a perfectly round dot, uh, as you can see here. Um, now one trick involved with that is if the paint's too thin it's kind of hard to do that uh, and uh, actually I'll talk about old paints in a minute too but this is another older bottle of paint this is probably I don't have this one marked but it's you know it's got probably seven or eight years old uh, and paints get thick and that actually comes in handy when I'm doing this kind of painting because it'll make a nice really round blob when you get a dot in there and you put it on there and it stays nice like a, a like a lens sort of thing um, now that would be very difficult to brush on and of course you couldn't airbrush it with that consistency uh, but for making little round lenses like that uh, thick paint comes in pretty handy uh, so you see looking at the old boy here oh talking about lights even more uh, on the type 10 i don't know if you can see how close you are with the camera there but uh, these are also supposed to be uh, some driving lights in the back here now i haven't painted those yet uh, checking references it's actually quite a bit of detail back there but either fujimi opted not to do it or these actually look like covers, the way the detail is here, but I don't know. Every reference pic picture I've seen of it shows some, uh, some nice detail uh, with similar orange driving lights and some yellow, perhaps, reverse lights. I don't know. you got to know when these things are backing up. Um, so since it's just flat right there, I really didn't want to do the toothpick thing and make round uh, lights on there because they're not round or square. Um, but I also didn't have the confidence to use my little brush here to make nice square lights. So what I'm going to do is dig through my stash of old decals, or decals, as uh, some individuals say. Commonwealth, I believe that is. Uh, and I'm just going to cut out little strips of orange de decals and put them on there, uh, and that should look pretty good. And it'll save me the, uh, the heartache of trying to be accurate and draw or paint uh, perfectly square tail lights, as it were there. Um, and that's about it for what I've done so far. I can talk about what we're going to do from this point on. Uh, in the next couple episodes, I'll be putting the, the decals on for the whole tank. Uh, there's some markings that go here, some markings that go up here, uh, the unit markings, whatever. Uh, and I'm still debating whether I'm going to apply a gloss coat to it and put the decals on or just try to do them on this surface. Um, 90% of modelers will say you should always lay down a gloss coat of some type uh, to put the decals on so they won't silver. Silvering is when you put a decal on a flat surface, or actually it happens a lot even on gloss surfaces, and you get air or some sort of phenomena trapped under the decal, and when you look at it, all the clear sections will look silver, hence the name silvering. And to avoid that, uh, it's recommended to put the decals on a nice glossy surface because that kind of gets out all the air under it. Um, and you get a nice, nice non-silvered decal. There's also uh, some chemical additives you can use uh, to do on that, and I might actually try that. Because one thing I've always been wary of when, I want, when I'm building armor, particularly, or anything that I want to have a dead flat finish, is it's always hard to get a nice even flat finish if you spot gloss somewhere. For example, some people recommend, if I'm going to put a decal here, okay, well, I'll just put some gloss on that area, wait for that to dry, put the decal on, and then flat the whole thing later. Um, I've tried that before, and it invariably the finish is always slightly different where that glossy part used to be. Uh, it always, there'll always be a slight difference in the sheen, no matter how much uh, clear flat coat I put on later. Um, the other option would be, well, if you don't want that difference, just clear coat the whole thing nice and glossy. You have a nice, you know, showroom finish tank uh, to show. Um, but then again, the problem I've had with that is I can never really get it back to the level of flatness uh, that I want. And although plenty of modelers do. Um, but I haven't been able to figure that trick out yet. Um, so write in, leave comments. Brian, how can I get it flat if I've super glossed it? Uh, now, on the other hand, most of the armor models are, I've built, I've just put the decals right on to the flat paint as it was. And I almost never have a problem with silvering. So, 
I don't know, silvering as a phenomenon certainly does exist out there. Uh, I've never had much of a problem with it. Um, but since I was doing this and videotaping it and making a show about this, I thought I would probably uh, at least should mention the fact that most modelers like to do it on gloss. Uh, so I'm still thinking about it. Um, next time when you see me, I will have made my decision to put the decals on, and we'll see how it goes. If I put it on flat uh, and it doesn't silver, good for me. If I put it on and it silvers, I'll take them off. And uh, a lot of decals with this kit so I can uh, use some other options if it doesn't work out the first time. Uh, so remember, no mistakes in modeling, only opportunities. And that's about it for the tank itself and the detail painting. Uh, so next time, some decals and things like that. Now, next, I will talk about, as I mentioned a minute ago, old paint. Old paint. As you might recall from earlier episodes, I said that uh, since the birth of my son, almost two years ago, I haven't built any models at all, uh, no painting at all. And before that, I hadn't really done much modeling in years prior to that, although I had done some. But I have a lot of paints uh, and other supplies, like these, these good Tamiya paints here, um, that I bought years and years ago, almost 10 years ago. All these paints here are labeled 2004, a couple are 2006, so they're quite old. Uh, and no matter how tightly you shut the lids, or store them in, in cool, dark places, um, particularly these enamels, um, they get really thick. And uh, I, I don't know if evaporating is the right word, uh, but when you open the bottle up again, there's almost, this is actually new. I bought this one the other day, sorry. Uh, particularly, or for example, good old FS56, the metallic gray we were talking about earlier. I opened this uh, guy up last night, uh, and it was just like a little chunk of mud at the bottom of the bottle. And I say, oh, Brian, hey, you work at HLJ, why don't you just go grab a fresh bottle? Well, I could do that, but this is still usable. So I used the good old uh, Tamiya, F uh, what is it, X20? You'll have to check later. The, the enamel thinner, uh, just put a couple uh, pumps full of the old eyedropper in here, uh, stirred nicely, and bingo, it's as good as new. Uh, another problem, um, if you've ever had paint for more than a couple years in your stash, is uh, getting the top off. Boy, these things can get really tight. Uh, now, if you're like me and you have the strength of between 10 to 12 men, you can get it off with a little, wait a minute, it's still kind of tight, yeah. You can monkey fist it off just like that and it can come off. Um, they make different tools for getting caps off. Um, there's even like jar openers you can get at uh, home centers and things like that, or in the, the kitchen utensils section of uh, your supermarkets, little rubber things that you can pop off there. Uh, another way to do it is run it under hot water for a little while. It kind of loosens up the, the, the crusty enamel in there. Uh, you can also whack it lightly so you don't break the bottle to kind of crack the thing like that. Uh, but luckily uh, in this build, I've been able to just kind of, you know, super power it off like that and it's worked. But sometimes you can't do that and it can really tear up your hands. See, look at that. See a little scrape right there from doing it. Whoa, whoa, sensitive hands. Yeah, so anyway, old paints. Uh, this one was also very old, had to refresh that. Uh, as we mentioned with the orange, I liked it kind of thick, so that one kind of worked out, didn't do too much to that. Uh, so if you have old paints in your collection, if you use the proper paint thinner, uh, you can always bring those little guys back to life and use them. Um, at this point, I will also mention again that unfortunately we can't sell the Tamiya paints um, over the internet anymore due to the shipping rules and regulations. Can't have stuff like this on airplanes or whatever. Um, but we do carry the Vallejo line, so check out hlj.com uh, for some of the paints that we do carry. And that's about it for today, except I just glanced over here and noticed there was one more thing I wanted to talk about. Mr. Lupe. Mr. Lupe. Lupe in Japanese means uh, magnifying glass like this. Of course, I think Lupe is uh, based on some other language, uh, as they often use in, J in Japanese. Uh, and some of the earlier ep episodes you saw me using something similar to this. So we don't have that item in stock anymore, but we do have a couple of these in. And uh, this also came uh, in very handy as I was doing the detail painting on here, because as I mentioned before, when I was building the kit, uh, I noticed that my 48-year-old eyes aren't what they used to be and couldn't see hardly anything when I was trying to get in there close and to get it together. Well, the same thing when I was doing the detail painting. You know, I get in there, have to pull back and say, okay, here's where I want to go, try to paint it, and use my lupe to get in and uh, constantly check and see that the paint was going where I wanted it to go. I don't want any surprises later. Uh, so this is a this is a good product. Uh, there are also some products uh, that we don't have in stock right now, but you can get via HLJ uh, magnifying visors that you can put on. Uh, I might look into that because this is this is actually kind of cool because you can take it out and hold it like a regular one, or you can stick it in there, and it also has some LEDs to light up what you're doing. 
But the visor one, of course, you'd be completely hands-free. I might look into getting one of those. Uh, Tamiya also makes a workstation that has a sort of uh, articulated larger one, larger lens that you can uh, see what you're doing. That looks pretty good too, but I haven't tried that one. So I'm going to have to get some um, you know, optical enhancement devices uh, if I build any more small models like this in 172nd scale. Um, so that's basically it for today's episode. Got the detail painting done. Um, it's looking okay. Uh, coming up next will be decals and then after that some weathering and uh, then she'll be done. So I'll see you next time on Boss Builds.